everyone, welcome to Mind Brain Talks, the place where you find diverse and scientifically accurate information regarding psychology, neuropsychology, psychotherapy, neurosciences and research methods every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino, I am a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who's been working as a therapist, researcher and educator for the past few years. In Mind Brain Talks, I discuss and describe a lot of topics, research findings and research methods and I try to explain to you the best as I can for you to understand and for you to learn something about it. All videos here are not intended to diagnose any psychiatric condition or neurological disorder. So, without further delay, let's jump for today's content. I used these four manuals to develop uh, the, today's video and uh, if you want to check them please see the video description below where you can find the link to uh, its specific uh, domain, ok? So uh, let's go! Today's content it will be related uh, to a tutorial section because today I will talk about uh, how to perform paired samples t-test. So, stay tuned! So, let's see what is a paired sample t-test. A paired sample t-test is a statistical test that is used to explore if means of the conditions from the same object or subject, such as pre-test or post-test scores, are statistically different. It's a measurement of the same observations over different periods of time, such as paired observations. Do you know, uh, a paired sample t-test is a parametric test and explores the statistical difference between two time points, two conditions, two measurements or a matched pair. Now let's look to the parametric assumptions that uh, we must uh, have in mind when we want to perform a paired sample t-test. So, the dependent variable must be continuous, there must be dependence of observations, the same group, same subject, same individual, ok? Uh, we must have a random sample of data from population. We expect that uh, our data has normal distribution. We expect also a uh, homogeneity of variances and we expect to have no outliers. So, now I'll show to you how to apply this knowledge to an hypothetical research problem or research paradigm. Please uh, look to this problem as an hypothetical one, ok? This is not a true problem, this is not true data. Uh, I've made this up just to uh, give you some, some illustration and I'll show to you how to perform or how to run a paired sample t-test in some uh, random data, ok? Please, this is not real uh, data, this is not real persons, ok? So, let's go. Let's look now for our hypothetical research problem. So, psychotherapy helps to improve emotion regulation skills. However, this assumption must be explored. So, we can uh, transform this, um, this uh, research question into a, an operant condition, such as emotion skills increase after psychotherapy. So, our, age, uh, our new hypothesis is there is no difference between a pre-test and a post-test condition, ok? And the age one, it's, uh, our age one hypothesis means that we have a difference between these means. So, as in the other research problems, here we want to reject the null hypothesis, because the null hypothesis means that there is no difference between the pre- and the post-test condition. So, if uh, this is true, it means that the, uh, uh, psychotherapy does not improve or do, does not increase the emotional regulation skills. So now let's jump to the SPSS. So, now we are here in the SPSS environment and I'll show to you how to perform or how to run a paired sample t-test. So, if you look here, we have our two variables emotion regulation uh, before 
um, a psychotherapy process and emotional regulation after the psychotherapy process. So, how can we perform um, one sample t-test? We go here to analyze, okay? Then we go here, compare means, and we just choose here paired sample t-test, okay? We click here and then this box will show. On the left we have our variables and we will choose the variables that we want to compare. So it's emotion regulation pre, go here and emotion regulation posh. It will go to here, okay? We look to options, uh, we just leave the standardized values that the SPCS gave us, 95% uh, and to exclude cases analysis by analysis, okay? So also it's pretty simple to perform this test, then we just click OK. So what we have here, we have here uh, these tables, okay? In this table we have the mean from the first variable the N and the standard devi devi deviation. Then we have the other mean for the second, um, the second group, okay? The second mean, the second observation. This is 3.5 uh, and 4.1. So here we have a paired sample correlation, which means that there is a significant correlation between this pair. Okay, it's a correlation that 0.61 and uh, as you may see the significant value is below 0.01 or 0.05 which means that this correlation is significant. And here we go to um, the, the third uh, table that shows us if there is a statistical significant a difference between uh, the first mean to the first mean. So here we have the difference, okay, and the standard deviation. Here we have the confidence intervals that we have for our difference. Here we have the value of the t-test. Here we have the degrees of freedom. And then finally, here we have our significance for uh, our paired sample t-test. And as you may see, uh, this value is below 0.01 or 0.05, which means that the difference between the first mean and the second mean is significant. Uh, therefore, we may imply that uh, the psychotherapy uh, may increase or may boost uh, or may develop new regulation skills um, which may be um, object or may be identified by a paired sample t-test, okay? So, again, here we have your difference between means, the standard deviation, it's, this is the standard error, okay? So, here we have the lower, um, uh, the lower uh, confidence interval and upper confidence interval, the two margins, okay? Then we have here the t-test, the, the value of t-test. Here you have the degrees of freedom. And here you have the significant value, which means that the difference between the first mean and the second mean is significant. So, I hope that you enjoyed the contents of today. And don't forget to see the video description regarding today's theme to look to the references that I think that are very useful to understand these concepts. Also, if you like what I'm doing here, please consider to subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. Also, if you want to say something about this, these topics, please use the comment section below to express your mind. Welcome to the Mind Brain Talks and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!